Hey, alright, so um, I'm going to upload a couple Lucid songs. Now, uh, Lucid was a short-lived band in about 1995 that I played guitar in. And when I was going through the tapes, um, there was a Lucid tape and I played a little bit of it. And we recorded, we recorded one demo in my basement. I had a eight track, eight track reel to reel. Now, that band was an absolute, just chaotic drama, <laughs> drama band. Um, lots of really, really heavy alcoholism between the singer and the drummer. Uh, they literally would show up to practice after drinking an eight pack and the drummer couldn't even stay on a stool. Um, it just got to the point where we couldn't even get anything done. And two shows we, ha we played without the singer because, um, he ended up getting kicked out of a club before we played and then getting arrested one one show before we played. So at one point, you know, I I just had to move on, you know. I just did start doing something else. The singer though, I was in a band called Laughter Train with um with him. And I have a lot of Laughter Train stuff on my YouTube page. Some of you may have heard, but if uh if you type in, you do a search, uh, through my YouTube, there's like a little place you can, you know, search my page specifically. Put in Laughter Train, and I I have like 20, 20 songs, and there's really good stuff. Like, that band did get a huge, huge record deal, um, but a lot of stuff went down right at that point. We had done like two demos where this label out of Seattle called Will Records paid for, you know, a few thousand dollars for doing doing demos for them. But then the second one was a demo because one of the owners was working with major labels in Los Angeles. So he would get bands and, you know, get bands these these labels that would be interested. Seemed like more often than not it it uh it never worked out for bands very i don't even know if any of the bands that you know went down and either played for a major label or um you know had something to do with a label down there ever actually put out a major label record through um through will records but i'm not sure i'm not sure maybe anyway that happened with Laughter Train. So we all moved up to Seattle. That's how I wound up up there. Um, Will Records was like stoked on on the band, on Jake's voice. Um, but they were also very controlling. Like they, you know, they wanted to, they wanted Jake more than anything. So they had actually talked about you know, the label kicking out everybody else out of the band. But at that same point, I was not um, getting along with um, with Jake for various reasons. We've actually remained friends over the years, but there were some issues at that point. My brother was playing bass, um, and and Bruce moved up to Seattle with us, and he, he just, he wasn't, you know, interested in you know, we weren't practicing, nothing was going on, it was ridiculous, but then there's like, you know, these labels interested and all this, so it was like really a downer, because finally you work really hard at a band like that, I mean, it was off and on for quite a few years, um, you know, Laughter Train played, uh, there was a short time I wasn't in the band, then I rejoined the band, da 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 da, anyway, so, Dean DeLeo from the Stone Temple Pilots joined the band on guitar, and one of his friends um, ended up playing drums, and then the an old bass player for Laughter Train ended up playing bass again in the band, and 
So they all went to L.A. and started living down there and recording an album for Sony. It's like $500,000 record deal or something, you know, huge record deal. Um, Dean DeLeo ends up recording the whole album, whole album's recorded, he ends up leaving the band, and the album never got released, and everybody left the band. So then, except for Jake. So then Jake was down there by himself and um, tried to reform the band, but it didn't work. And then he just ended up coming back to Washington and saying, fuck it. But the album never came out. Um, so, but the the album was recorded and it's on. It's uh, not on my page, though. So none of the Dean DeLeo stuff is on my uh, my YouTube Though maybe I should upload that stuff now because I have it. It's just um, I don't know. I mean, there's a there's a uh, a fan that found Jake or something and uploaded, and Jake sent him the songs and he uploaded it. So there's a dude that has those songs, and I'll put a link to those songs. Um, and the album would have done. I think the album would have done really well. There's a couple songs on there that were amazing, you know, but the band just fell apart. We were together, uh, right after I moved back from Albuquerque, um, Laughter Train started, and we literally played every day. I mean, that band was, we played tons of shows, um, did really well, and like I was saying, early on we had, you know, um, the same label was inter interested and gave us money to record and whatever. But, yeah, I mean, that was a weird time because, uh, you know, from 1991 through about 1995 or 6, I mean, you know, labels were picking up bands left and right. I mean, it was, or you know, that that whole Northwest signing boom was was going strong for, you know, for those years. So we were we were in the middle of that and um and I guess you could say eventually the band did, you know, did get picked up, though, you know, it didn't work out. Um but anyway, yeah. So that's that story. I'll upload some lucid songs and I'll put a link to that laughter train stuff with uh Dean from Stone Temple Pilots and uh, and check out the old laughter train stuff that I played drums on uh, on my page. Okay, talk to you later.